Good morning, fourth grade. We are going to continue reading our story to Hudi or Thoth, God of Knowledge. Um, and you have the same warm up you have from Friday because we know it was a little hectic. So um, you'll want to press pause to write down your answers um, to the fill in the blank questions. And this should take you about um, three to four minutes. And when you're ready, press play and we'll continue with the focus question and the vocabulary. Our focus question for today is how does the author's use of literary elements like exposition and rising action advance the plot? And our vocabulary words are going to be the same. We have um, phantoms, which that is like a dream or an image, like an optical illusion. So this is phantom. Satiated, that means um, when you are, you're so full, you are finished eating. Um, you can't eat any more. And crescent, that is um, part of a moon. All right, as we read our text, um, this shouldn't be here. We're going to use our CSPS strategy um, to describe Thoth. All right? Or in this case, he's also called Tehuti. All right, let's keep going. In our text, it's not easy being Ra's tongue. Tehuti can attest to that. Others interpreted his words as the sun god's wishes alone, as though Tehuti were but an instrument. The truth was, without Tehuti, Ra couldn't make it through the day. Tehuti stood at the prow of the boat, Majet, as it crossed the sky, while Ra went from being a newborn, hardly bigger than a scarab, hatching from dung, to a youth strong and bold as a falcon, to an old man the wind could toss, so Tehuti's responsibility for guiding the boat expanded as the daylight shrank. And we'll stop right there because um, we can already describe Thoth or Tehuti. We know that he is Ra's tongue, um, but he's not just an instrument. Um, he's actually, he actually feels like he's his own person because he has a lot of responsibilities. Okay, so Tehuti is Ra's tongue, but he is responsible for getting Ra through the day and the night. Press pause to write down your answer for 1A. And the quote you can use is this first sentence um, from the first paragraph. And you can also use this third sentence. Without Tehuti, Ra couldn't make it through the day. Press pause to write down your quote for 1B, and then we're going to keep going. In our setting, we know that Tehuti is on um, the boat Majet and as it's crossing the sky. Um, so that's the first part. We're going to read the rest of the page to get the second part of the setting. Oh, Tehuti wasn't alone in that job. Ma'at, the spirit of cosmic balance and the child of Ra, also rode the boat. Though the goddess Ma'at was only an idea, she supported Tehuti in task. Tehuti loved Ma'at as his partner. In a sense, they were wed. Others sometimes entered the boat, gods, animals, but as passengers along for the ride. In evening, Ma'at shared a dreadful task with Tehuti. That's when the old man Ra traveled the twelve caverns of the underworld Duat in the boat, Miss. Mesectet, going now from west to east. Okay, and so that's an exa that's another part of the setting. Um, in the evening, Tehuti and Ra traveled the twelve caverns of the underworld. Duat in the boat, Mesectet. All right, and so when we're talking about the setting, we know that um, Tehuti <coughs> and Ra and my aunt are in, during the day, are in the boat Majet as it travels across the sky. And at night, they're in the boat Mesectet as it travels the 12 caverns of the underworld Duat. Press pause to write down your answer for 2A. You can also rewind if you need to. Um, and we have two quotes about... This one from the first paragraph about how they're riding in Majet, a crossing the sky. 
And this one in the fourth paragraph about how they're traveling the 12 caverns of the underworld Duat in the boat Mess Sectet in the evening. Press pause to write down your quotes and play when you're ready. And we're on that second page, and now we're looking for the problem. Hungry serpentine monsters infested the waters, and the old man Ra was too feeble in body and heart to conquer them. Ma'at spied the monsters, Tehuti veered around them. But every night when they reached the ninth cavern, a pep attacked. A pep was the worst creature imaginable, without eyes, ears, nose. Nothing scared this nearly insensate demon. His breath was a roar of terror. Nightly, Ra and Ma'a and Tehuti fought a pep until a pep sprayed poison in Ra's eyes. Then Tehuti wiped Ra's eyes clear so he could see a pep throw his iron scales into his pitiless heart. The monster's blood then spurted up and up and colored the sky rosy, the backdrop for Ra's appearance as newborn dawn. Tehuti sang his victory like baboons sing at the rising sun. Sometimes he got so carried away, he took baboon form himself. The god set claimed that he fought a pep each night, the liar, and vanquishing the darkness, the coming of the light, all that depended on Tehuti. And so in, on this page we have our problem, um, a pep, also in our Red Pyramid text, is called um, Apophis, um, is, you know, a nasty monster who attacks Ra every night. Okay, a pep is a nice, nasty monster, attacks Ra every night, um, and sprays poison in Ra's eyes. Okay? And then you can write that down for 3A. And then your quote you can get from this middle paragraph on the second page. And to solve this problem, um, Tehuti wipes Ra's eyes clear so that he can kill the monster. To solve the problem, Tehuti wipes Ra's eyes clear so that he can kill a pep. You can get that quote right here. All right? And Tehuti's saying, you know, and after they pass through that, then they're able to get to the other side of the duat, and the day starts over again. And so Tehuti feels like he is responsible um, for each day. All right? And I'm going to keep reading. Um, you will need you will need to hear the rest of this for your exit ticket, um, and then this that will help make the paragraph um, easier to understand. So keep following along with me on the third page. And it wasn't just the day cycle that Tehuti endured. Okay, and so when this gives us a clue that that day cycle we were talking about, that's going to help you on number one, part A and B of your exit ticket. So everything we just read is going to help you on number one, A and B of your exit ticket. Um, and this should help you on the other questions. He made the year cycle work. In the beginning, the year was 360 days, and the waters of none were sterile. But Tehuti played a high-stakes dice game with the moon god, Kansu. He won and got 70 seconds of the moon's light, five days. Over those days, none was fertile. The first deities were created. Okay, so that means none, um, or also known as Nut, okay, the sky goddess had her ch five children. Um, Osiris, Horus, Isis, Set, and Nephethys. That's who they're talking about. In gratitude Kinsu, to Kinsu, Tehuti curved his ibis bill to match the crescent moon's shape. Okay. Looked at from a certain perspective then, Tehuti was the creator of the cosmos, not Ra. Tehuti would never voice this, of course, but... Facts were facts. 
Tahuti served whoever needed him. He was aware of what could go wrong. He heard the waiting phantoms of pandemonium calmly licking their chops. Their appetites must never be satiated. Tahuti convinced Tefnut to come back to Egypt after Rod refused to show her appreciation. He spoke with reason. That's all it took. Okay, and so the rest of the story is telling us about how Tahuti helps different people. He helps the gods and he helps humans. And so um, these two paragraphs are about how Tahuti helps the gods. So he helped Tefnut. And then it says, it was Tahuti, always Tahuti, who solved the problem, whatever the problem. When Set ripped Usir into 14 pieces, and the Set could only find 13, Tahuti whispered to her sounds to make Usir whole and alive long enough to convince Haru Sas, conceive Haru Set. Then he protected Aset during pregnancy, and when Haru Set fought with Set for 80 years, Tahuti maintained the power balance. If one gravely injured the other, turn the page, Tehuti's words healed the underdog. Once Tehuti recovered all but a small fraction of the eye that had gorged out of Harusa Aset, and once he brought fatally wounded Harusa Aset back to life, Tehuti restored order. That was the bottom line. He honored Ma'at. Tehuti was the god of wisdom. And this is the first time in our text where um, Tehuti is acknowledged as a god in his own right. He's not just part of Ra. He is actually a god. In his wisdom, he gave people words to philosophize and pray. He gave them hieroglyphs to record when, where, why, how, who, to keep track of history. He taught them numbers to calculate the layers of the heavens, the stars, the earth, and all within them and to understand astronomy. He helped them look around objectively so they could know, not just imagine. He gave them science. One might conclude Tehuti was the most important god, for isn't wisdom the most important virtue? And if one did, Tehuti might agree, but he would never say it. He's far too wise.